What is up everybody, it's Apex Guardian, and today we are playing some Minecraft Feed the Beast Revelation. Uh, so today we're going to be making a nuclear reactor. Yes, yeah, yes you heard me right. We're making a nuclear reactor from extreme reactors. This reactor will put out uh, RF power, which we're going to need in abundance once we start getting into applied energistics. I, I think, I hope, I've been wrong before. But uh, we have a shortage of space for all of our ores. I've even made a second ore chest and it's filling up really quick. So, uh, we're, we need to start by making 109 casings. So that's going to be the, uh, the reactor casing from Extreme Reactors. This takes graphite, iron, and reactor casing cores, which take graphite iron gold and redstone so graphite can be crafted just by smelting up some coal i don't have any coal on me but fortunately you can use charcoal as well so just throw it in there it'll make graphene or, or graphite not graphene like so uh that gives us graphite bars so all we have to do to craft these is uh make our reactor casings we're gonna need a stack and 45 to build the reactor I plan to build uh, if my math is correct so what is our limiting factor there gold yeah that's probably gold that's okay we have a lot over here and we'll grab some iron just in case iron was the limiting factor and our inventory is full there we go uh, that's a stack of 35 okay from here we need to make these all into our reactor casings again if I did my math right everything should work out correctly irons gonna what, what was the deficiency there iron so, oh that's tin uh, a good thing we have a ton of iron <laughs> absolute mega load this helps me uh, control how much <laughs> resources I actually have available you know I my math was wrong I <laughs> didn't realize made four okay we have way too many reactor casings now let's move on so we need a uh, reactor redstone flux power tap this is how we're gonna get the power out out and this takes four reactor casings. <laughs> I can't believe we did that. <laughs> so we're going to need two reactor access ports. Uh, and we're going to need a hopper for that. So we've got to make some chests. So there we go. Uh, we can make our two reactor access ports, which uh, we'll throw right there. And then we need a reactor redstone flux power tap. This is so we can get our uh, RF power out. And that is this one right here. So it just takes some redstone, block of redstone, and reactor casings, which of course we made too much out of. Uh, we, we only need one of those, and then we need uh, three reactor fuel rods, which are these ones right here. That just takes regular glass, iron, graphite, and refined uranium so uh, I guess this is a good time to get into uranium so uh, uranium in feed the beast revelation comes from two sources so there's yellow right ore and uranium ore both of these when smelted down will create refined uranium or when pulverized or crushed they'll create uranium grit you'll get two for every ore you put in so you can double the amount you get uh, that makes the refined uranium so yellow right or uranium and um because <laughs> because i i uh built way too many reactor casings we uh ran out of graphite so one moment okay so now now we have a bunch of graphite again um what, what were we making i got distracted 
right we're making the fuel rods so we we need three of these yes three not three million now we need the reactor control rod which is this one right here uh, and that takes a piston as well as refined uranium graphite and more reactor casings uh, and we don't have a piston handy and that makes us uh, most of the pieces we need now we are gonna need 12 gold blocks so we got those 12 um, I think it's purely aesthetic you don't need it but reactor glass we're gonna make some reactor glass because aesthetics are everything uh, we're gonna make 32 okay so once you have all your items, you can just start building it. It's pretty straightforward. I cleared this area out and I'll go into that uh, after we're done making the nuclear reactor. Um, so I, I've cleared out this area and you want to make a five by five. So we're going to go here. So make a little five by five square and then uh, just fill in the bottom, build up three. And then place another one so you're five tall and you want to make another five by five uh, as you go it'll tell you kind of what you're missing what your requirements are to make it so if you right click on it it'll be like hey you need this right now it's saying it uh, not enough reactors require at least one don't know specifically what that's referencing <laughs> other than it can't uh, determine this is a reactor. You want to leave this open. So once once you kind of have this shape uh, in the center, uh, put your reactor fuel rod right down the middle like that. And you're going to want to encase this in block of gold. So anything that's open, any side that's directly open to the air, you're going to want to put a coolant. So we're going to use blocks of gold because we, we had a fair amount of gold. We don't anymore. Um, and uh, there, there's other stuff like there's enderium. Um, yeah, enderium. I think it's the best for cooling, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I know you can use other stuff. You can use uh, graphite blocks, which would have been good if we still had graphite. But we burned it all into oblivion um it, it, it you know there, there's lots of different options it's definitely worth looking up the wiki i personally don't know uh the next thing you're going to want to do is fill in all these open sides with um your uh your glass for aesthetic reasons and then you want your redstone flux power tap this is how you get the, the RF out. So we're gonna throw it right there, right in the middle, so I can have a pipe coming off and make it look really cool. I'm gonna build a building around this at some point. So that's, yeah, that's why I flatten this area out. Uh, you can make these bigger. I think they can go out to like 32 by 32. But that being said, this should be hopefully enough for what we want to do. So, the reactor control rod goes up top. We're missing something. Hang on. Okay, so one thing we forgot was the reactor controller. This requires a comparator, a diamond, two refined uranium, and redstone, and the casings. Uh, so the only thing we don't have is this. Okay, so now we've made our, our comparator. We can make the controller and uh we're we're good to continue with the building so you want to go up top and put your control rod at the very tippy top right there that is very important and then uh once you have everything in case you want to leave one side open this will be where you access everything so we want the two access ports here we're going to change one of them to outlet so you can get you can get the byproduct out which um, I can't remember exactly what it is. Um, let's buy a product. Oh, and then you put your controller in the middle. I don't think these specifically have to be touching, but it, it is now. 
So this is our, our nuclear reactor. Very ominous, very scary. Um, but should be fully functional. So that's our input, that's our output. We're gonna need some pipes to connect this. We're gonna use the flux ducts um, and some servos. So let's go make those real quick. Sorry, not flux ducts. We need uh, item ducts. That's what it is. We'll throw those down on there and we put a servo on that side and a servo on that side. Uh, this will ignore symbol, we'll uh, keep it blacklisted, I guess, uh, and we'll ignore and keep it blacklisted again. Um, so from here, you just want to connect it up. I'm going to use cables because I like the look of cables. I know you can do this wirelessly, but for now, this should be more than sufficient for my needs because we don't have a very long distance go as you can see right there. So this will pump out our RF power. Um, in here, you can see everything like the temperature, how much RF you're generating, how much uh, millibuckets it's using per tick, and the fuel reactivity. So how um, irradiated it is, higher levels of radiation reduce fuel burnup. And then it also has an energy buffer. Um, and it shows you all sorts of safety features. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it doesn't overflow. You can deactivate it right here with this button just in case you're worried about a meltdown, but this should be a very stable uh, build. So we all we need to do to start is throw in our uranium and it automatically took it. Our core fuel status is at 66, 91.7% full. Uh, we have one fuel rod and our max capacity is uh, 1,200, 12,000 millibuckets. We have 11,000 millibuckets fuel in there. So we're definitely gonna throw more in here uh, and then we can just turn it on. So as you see here, it's generating um, about a thousand per tick. This will slowly climb as it uh, increases in temperature. And then uh, our heat will too both the core heat and the casing heat, and these will hopefully reach an equal, equilibrium. E <laughs> equilibrium. If you see any of these rising dramatically higher than the other, or both of them dramatically rising, then you have a cooling issue and you need to go back and resort that. Shut this thing down and figure it out because you do not want this thing to blow up. It will not be fun. Uh, but this thing's pumping out a ton of RF. Fortunately, it does have an inner energy buffer because uh, as you can see, everything's full. If we only have like, I don't know, like 20 million RF storage, so it's it's not a lot and that was full already. But the, the reason why I want this is because uh, applied energistic storage systems require a constant power source. And if you run out, you're kind of screwed because you can't access any of your stuff. So uh, that's why we're making a nuclear reactor. Also, I might start powering our void ore miner over there with it because we will have so much extra energy. So one more thing I wanted to do before we, we get into the changes around the base is I wanted to make a bunch of energy cells just to store up some of this energy. Uh, I know it's not the best way, but I haven't done anything in Draconic Evolution yet. So it that's kind of our limiting factor. Okay, so to make an advanced power cell, uh, not energy cell, power cell. Uh, the advanced one, they can stack together with cards, so this is kind of what you want, like um, like what we have over in this corner. We got cards on a link ID, so this there's three of them here and it holds 12 million RF, RF instead of four. So what we want to do to make these is we just, uh, we need a regular power cell. To make a regular power cell, we need a machine frame. So we're gonna make a couple of these. I think we probably have enough resources to make like five, hopefully. Uh, and then you need prismarine shards. So prismarine shards are made by taking quartz. So just regular nether quartz and throwing them on the atomic reconstructor. Uh, I've got it set up on a pressure plate because it's really easy to do it this way and then you get your prismarine shards. Um, I imagine you can find them from seed temples as well. So that, that's just one way to do it without going out of your house. 
So now we need the power cells so we can, oh yeah, okay, we can't make five of these. And then we can make the advanced power cell, which takes infused diamonds. So infused diamonds need dimensional shards. These can be found abundantly in the nether and more rare in the overworld. Now we do have quite a bit in here from our void ore miner, which can also find them because this will mine everything. Um, somewhere in here we got them. There, dimensional shards. So very, very easy to get. And uh, we're gonna need one, two, three, four. That's one. Okay, now we have enough. And we, we also had enough prismarine, so that was really nice. Uh, so with 20 of these dimensional shards, or infused diamonds, we can now make our advanced power cells, all five of them. Which is gonna hold 25 million RF, something like that. So you can just stack them on top of each other. They're not going to stack there. You see this bottom one. Uh, we have to make an input um, and an output. So we're gonna need um, our RF tool. Crescent wrench thing. Is that right? Is it the crescent hammer? Yeah. Okay, so orange is out, uh, blue is in. So output, input, crescent hammer to change it. So right now, only this one is stacking up. So we need to link these with link cards. So those are actually quite easy to make. We need five of them. Uh, it's just paper, gold nuggets, and redstone. Now to link these, we just go to the bottom one, we'll open it up, and we'll throw in our card. That is unlinked, so we put in a link. There we go, okay. Now it's linked ID three. I don't know why, because I only have two, but that works for me. Now if I wanna link the rest to it, I put that in there and I put these four that I want in this section that says link. Put them in. They'll all change to link ID three. So these are all linked to each other. And we go to the other power cells we made and we can just throw one in there, one in there, and that one, and into the top one. So now this holds um, 20 million RF, which is nice. That's a, a fair amount of power and we're not gonna use all that right away. So. I think we should be good to uh, move on. Let's just check on this, make sure we're good. 6.7% uh, depleted, casing heats 343, core heats 359, those are pretty close, I'm not worried. Energy buffers getting full. We're producing about 1,070 RF a tick, which is pretty sweet, and we haven't produced any byproduct. Now, this will run out of fuel, so we're gonna have to keep it fueled up. So uh, I'm gonna throw all my uranium in the um, in the pulverizer here. Okay, so all our yellow, right, and uranium are in the pulverizer. They're gonna get automatically pulverized down and pumped into this chest here, where we're gonna get two uranium grit each one. We're gonna have a ton of uranium, and I just gotta smelt it down and then put it over there. Eventually, we'll probably I, I hit that all the time. Eventually, we'll automate it, automate it. But uh, for now we're good we need a building around it before we even do that okay so the changes to the base changes the base this got bigger of course um i made a csu here and then exploded it and then made another csu with low voltage transformer and it's good um as well as this fluid solid canning machine which uh you take like food you put it in here you put some cans in it puts it into cans and then you just got this the the nice thing about this is when you're hungry no matter how hungry it'll eat until you're full with just one right click and it's instantaneous so it's it's a lot uh easier to use i made this little wall here it's a to-do list so this isn't technically in order but uh these are just things i need to get accomplished so build a RF power reactor, which we just did. Build an RF power generation building, which I'll probably do off camera. Create an applied energistic storage server, which I'm hoping to do soon because we're running out of space 
quick. Uh, make a machine to autocraft storage cells for the applied energy sticks storage server. I want to make like a confusing one using auto crafting benches because yeah. Uh, explore the secret dungeon thing you found. I found a secret dungeon thing. We're going to explore that at some point. Create a system to auto smell ores from the V miner, the void ore miner. Create reliable EU power generation, uh, which that's all we have right now. So that needs to be done. Uh, make nano armor because I want nano armor and figure out a way to fly. That one's a big to do list item. We might do that uh, soon. So over here, you may have noticed this tree farm. This thing's pretty simple. It was really easy to make. It's very similar to the last episode. It uses a plant gatherer and a plant sower. Uh, don't know how rubber would got in there. We'll take that out. Uh, so that, you know, it gathers whatever. It's it's basically an identical setup as the last episode. Uh, in here we have an overflow for trees um, and then the wood gets piped down. So the wood gets piped down into my basement right here. And don't worry, I'll go over all that. I don't know if I showed that off, but uh, so it gets piped down here it's put in here right now I have it disabled because the quarry finished but then what's supposed to happen is it comes out of here it gets pumped into this redstone furnace turned into charcoal automatically pumped into here as an overflow buffer and then each of these are set up to request from the retrievers coal when they need it so they always stay full with charcoal and I don't have to come down here and babysit it at all now I think this was here last time but we we're still digging out that one I can't remember if this was here I think this was it I may have improved it but uh, and then I made this extra power storage because it makes it a lot faster their power generator thing it makes it a lot faster and then they pump over to this new quarry which is actually done uh, and was quite big I still got to get all the water out of it I don't know how long that's gonna take but uh, quite big but anyways I think I'm gonna leave this off for a while because this generated way too many, like, cobblestone, we're, we're over 100,000. With the one up there, we're probably close to 150. Uh, this stuff, I need to deal with. So I just keep manually carrying it up. It needs to be automatic. Uh, and then this is where the, all the ores go and, and whatnot. And we, we have quite a bit. So I think I'm going to leave this off for a while since we have the void ore generator. Uh, and now that we have nuclear power, I'm probably going to add that power to the void ore generator. So it's going to be producing ore at a much faster rate than it currently is. And it's already pr producing at a faster rate than I can currently consume. Although we did use a ton of iron today by mistake. So uh, AE storage is definitely something I need to do. It's, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. So, um, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess for now I'm going to build a building around here and, uh, try and clean this place up a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I, I hope this video was helpful for making a nuclear reactor. You can always make bigger ones, but for me, this should be fine for now because we don't have anywhere for the power to go other than that. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you had a great time and I'll see you all next time. Peace.